Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. It left entire towns underwater and stranded people on floodway subway platforms. The remnants of Hurricane Ida take aim at the Northeast. Rod. The analysts thought by now we'd be finished with the computer chip shortage, but that turned out to be wrong. COVID keeps getting in the way, and now it's forcing massive cutbacks by our automakers. But we begin with an unusual odor down river that sparked an investigation from hazmat teams along with state and in federal environmental agencies. Flat Rock officials say if you smell it or feel sick, call them immediately and get to fresh air. Yeah, the smell was first detected at a home and a sanitary sewer lift station. It impacts an area south of Gibraltar Road and east of Hol Olmstead. Sean Lay is in Flat Rock where crews are testing the air quality there. Sean. They are Jason. Good evening to you. We're here in Flat Rock at the staging area for all kinds of crews here. Eagle telling me it's all hands on deck to try to identify this mystery odor that the mayor tells us smells like a fruity gasoline. No calls for evacuations right now. However, two homeowners are out of their homes tonight and we just got an update. The smell has not been identified nor where it's coming from. Here's the latest. The U.S. EPA, Eagle officials, and hazardous materials teams from downriver and western Wayne County, they're going street by street and door to door in the southeast area of Flat Rock. The issue? An odor detected at one of Flat Rock's sanitary sewer lift or pumping stations and inside two homes in the Hickory Ridge subdivision. One homeowner telling us his home has been uninhabitable since Tuesday, and crews continue to detect fumes in his home. Our cameras watching environmental crews lift sewer lids and take readings with gas monitors, finding fume levels that potentially can burn in the air. But so far, just a smell. No one has gotten sick. And at this hour, the odor has not been identified. We just spoke to the mayor of Flat Rock. He's asking people if they smell anything, call it in. If anyone feels sick, leave your home right away. Those guys quickly got overwhelmed. Uh, there was just, as they were looking for the stuff, it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. We don't know what the stuff is. We don't know where it is as far as the source. We know where it is contained, and it is contained to that southeastern corner of the city. Back here live in Flat Rock, Flat Rock, we've been all over that southeastern corner of the city. As you could see, we haven't smelled a thing, but we're told it's really hit or miss. And when it hits, it's very, very strong. Now, two schools in this immediate area, they kept the kids inside today just as a precaution. And again, this is a large scale investigation. The mayor and other crews are saying if you smell something or feel sick, call 911 and get out of the house. An update live at six o'clock, guys. Back to you. All right. Sounds good. We'll see you then, Sean. Oakland University professors go on strike today calling for a new contract. They've been negotiating a new contract with the university since May, demanding higher wages and better benefits. Faculty members say their salary proposal was a non-starter with the university. The contract was extended a year ago to get through COVID, but it expired last night. Today's strike is happening on the first day of classes at OU. Students were told, though, to still come to class despite the strike. Detroit Public Schools and the Teachers Union announced a new two-year agreement that includes pay hikes for teachers there. The district says the deal will pay veteran teachers a 4% wage increase each year. All employees with the Detroit Federation of Teachers will also get $2,000 holiday bonuses for both years of the contract. Teachers who also have to do online learning this year because of quarantining students will get an additional $2,000. Superintendent Vitti says the deal gets Detroit teachers closer to his ultimate goal. What we need to do is make uh, our teachers the highest paid, you know, in the country, in the state, because the work here is harder than anywhere else. And, you know, I can't get us there immediately, but I think every agreement, we come closer and closer to that goal. Detroit's Board of Education still needs to approve this contract. Two of the big three are planning massive plant shutdowns because of the ongoing chip shortage. At GM, it impacts nearly all of its plants in North America, including here in Michigan. Business editor Rod Maloney has been following this problem for the very beginning, and he joins us live with more. Rod, good evening. 
Yeah, yeah, Kimberly, you know, any optimism that this uh, this chip shortage would abate anytime soon is long since gone. As a matter of fact, General Motors has 13 working assembly plants in the North America region. Only nine of them, or actually they're closing nine of them in the days to come here, but they're not the only ones fighting this fight. It takes six months to get a computer chip from the wafer board to chip form. It then needs testing, packaging, and shipping from half a world away. Unlike earlier this year, COVID cases in Malaysia are slowing down the packaging and shipping processes, forcing General Motors into extending for two more weeks its existing shutdowns at the Lansing Delta Township, Spring Hill and Ramos, Mexico plants, extending for three weeks its current shutdowns at the Cami plant of Ingersoll, Canada, the San Luis Potosi, Mexico plant and the Equinox half of the Ramos, Mexico plant. The new additions to GM's closure list are Fort Wayne, Wentzville, and the Salau, Mexico assembly operations. Guidehouse Insights auto analyst Sam Abel Samad says there's no good news here on the horizon either. This is a signal that you know th this this is a problem that is not going to be resolved uh, for at least probably the next six months. Over at Ford this coming week, it's closing its Kansas City F-150 plant. The Dearborn truck plant will work only one shift. The Kentucky truck plant will have only two of three shifts working. All of these vehicles that are down now are these automakers' most profitable vehicles that remain in very high demand and now shorter supply. The fact that companies are forced not to build makes for an exceptionally expensive supply chain problem. By the time this is all said and done, the total may well reach into the tens of billions. Stellantis has several plants down this week, Belvedere, Sterling Heights, Brampton, Ontario. And next week, the Windsor minivan plant is going to be down for the next week. So this has a, a, a ripple effect across the industry. Toyota's production this month is going to be down 40%. Yeah, Back really affecting so many. So right in the beginning, you said GM has 13 North American assembly plants. I thought there were more, no? Well, there are. Uh, there are two more, but uh, they're, they're down. The uh, Orion assembly plant where they make the bolt is down because of the fire problem there with the vehicles. And then over in uh, Pole Town, the, uh, the old Pole Town plant, Plant Zero now they call it, is in a changeover mode to try and start building electric vehicles. And so therefore, they're not counting that plant because it's not affected yeah. by the shortage. Yeah. Okay. More to come on this. Rod, we appreciate the report. Jason. At least 29 people are dead after what's left of Hurricane Ida battered the Northeast. And the images are shocking. Subway stations just submerged with water pouring onto the platforms there. That's New York City. And cars submerged in New Jersey. The rain shattered records and prompted the National Weather Service to issue a flash flood emergency in New York City, something that's only done when lives are at risk. When Ida arrived in the Northeast, she still had plenty of fight. We saw a horrifying storm last night, unlike anything we have seen before. Heavy rain in New York City created waterfalls in subway stations and flash flooding, rising water inundating a bus in Queens. In New Jersey, roadways became waterways overnight. Cars overwhelmed by the rising water, rescuers busy throughout the region today using air and water to bring people to safety. I'm left for nothing. We're homeless right now. But this all, you know, we're all going to come together and we're going to figure out a solution and we'll go from there. Before the storm slammed New York, it hit Maryland and Metro Philadelphia. A possible tornado pounded the South Jersey community of Mullica Hill. It was pretty quick. Um, wind, maybe five minutes. And then just everything was decimated. A fast moving storm that left long lasting damage. Yeah, in places you just don't expect to see it either. Tomorrow, President Biden will travel to Louisiana to look at the damage Ida did when it made landfall there as a hurricane. The Washtenaw County Health Department has issued a mask mandate for all K through 12 schools this fall. Starting next Tuesday, students and staff within the county will be required to wear a face mask while indoors. Officials say the emergency order will remain active until COVID transmission within the county decreases to a moderate level or lower. Ingham County also issued a similar school mask mandate today, joining Wayne and Oakland counties.
And fewer than an hour, in less than an hour, I should say, the city of Taylor is throwing a big party for a group of world champions. That's right. We're talking about a parade and fireworks display fit for the Little League World Series champs from Taylor North. Mara McDonald, our own world champion, is live at the Taylor Recreation Center <laughs> where the parade is going to step off. Hey, Mara. <laughs> Chase, welcome to Parade Prep Central, or as you said, the Taylor Recreation Center. You can see we've got kids out the gazoo around here. And here's something neat that um, Taylor decided to do, especially the Little League. So, of course, the Taylor North World Series champions are the stars of the show. There's no question. But they decided to allow all the kids who play Little League in Taylor to march in this parade. So you are just going to have a huge host of kids marching down Goddard to party ultimately to Heritage Park tonight where the stars, some of whom I have spoken with in the last few minutes, uh, are going to be signing autographs uh, and other items. They're also going to end the evening with fireworks. So we're getting ready. We are geared up. We're in the background of the parade prep and we will see you along the parade route tonight at six with some of those kids who um, they were pretty great. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Live in Taylor tonight. Back to you. Get, get yourself are. a few autographs. Mara. That's right. Yeah, I know they're going to want to <laughs> sign those. Can't wait for your story at six, Mara. We'll see you then. We've all picked up new habits during the pandemic, like washing your hands more often or carrying hand sanitizer around at all times. And experts say there are others you may not realize that we should definitely hold on to when we're out of this pandemic. Andrew. Kimberly and Jason, we have perfect weather for that parade in Taylor or any event in Southeast Michigan. Excellent weather with temperatures going from the 70s into the 60s after sunset under clear skies. How chilly does it get tonight? What about warmth for tomorrow? Any rain for the holiday weekend? I've got the, all the answers coming up in your weather forecast in minutes. New COVID research is constantly coming out. I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge. Coming up, I'll have the latest showing how much the Delta variant increases hospitalization and what percent of Americans have antibodies from being infected. Redrawing Michigan's election boundary lines is a Herculean task the state has been working on for months. Coming up, why one of the state's top election clerks says he's now concerned.